What is going on everybody? Pretty special video this one because um, it's my Trident and uh, this is actually the final video I'm going to do on the Trident. There's obviously a few little videos that will um, be segregated for like tyres and all that kind of stuff because I want to continue my review on the tyres and all that kind of thing. But um, this will be my final walk around video of the Trident. So I'm going to call this one because this will be Trident Builds Episode 5. Um, I'm going to call it the Ultimate Trident because I think my car is the Ultimate Trident because it's mine, may as well. But uh, it's going to be quite a long video. Um, I'm predicting probably over an hour. So I know that's a long time to sit on YouTube and that kind of thing. But what I've done is in the description, I've segregated each section for you. So if you just want to see what's happening in the tray, happy days, jump to that section. You've got to see what's happening on the roof rack, under the bonnet, in the interior. It's all going to be segregated. So you can pretty much go to all those places in the description. So hopefully that helps you out. Um, a lot to talk about here because um, there's a lot happening with this car. There's probably a lot happening since I've done my last video, uh, which I think was phase three, maybe four. Can't quite remember. But uh, this is definitely the final phase. So without further ado, let's get into it. So as always, we're going to start with the back. Um, so a fair bit's changed since I suppose last time I spoke about this Osru roof rack system that I use. Um, so let's start off with the stuff that's in front of you. Jimmy from Grab Me Gears Bag, still going strong. Um, no complaints with that. It's been um, hanging in there and uh, it's been on the car since day one, since I've got it. So um, happy days with Jimmy, makes good gear. We already know that, I've said that in the videos in the past. I've changed some of the lighting up here. So I've got the uh, Defend uh, lighting, so just LEDs and that kind of thing. But um, just changed them up, a little bit more bright. Gives you a better coverage over the um, back, you know, back tray and that kind of stuff when I'm uh, cooking or that kind of thing. And uh, I've got two of those on the back here. So this one here pretty much illuminates the whole area. So again, just more light. Reversing lights, pretty standard stuff. And I've got the tire in the back here as well. So we'll go into the back. All right. So Titan drawers. We all know these are in here. I haven't got the fridge in there at the moment. I just want to give you a little bit more of an idea of space. Um, I normally have the fridge in there, but I figured just leave it out so you can actually see everything, um, especially the power box and that kind of stuff at the back. I've got the uh, fridge cable just on a, um, I think they call it a crawler cable, but it obviously just stops the uh, cable getting nicked up and um, caught up and stuff. Something that you probably don't know about. I do have onboard air now. Um, so airbag man jumped on board and uh, we worked out a bit of an onboard air system for um, the car, because obviously I've got the airbags, but um, that comes with the uh, airbag man compressor. I think it's an eight litre tank um, and all the little fittings and that kind of stuff to get it all hooked up. And in also, also in the car, I've got little switches that I can use to uh, pump up the rear airbags. Now, the Osru uh, tub rack, fair bit, of, fair bit of stuff going on here. So water does get in, if you've got them set up from factory because they're quite open, obviously. Um, it's like a Meccano set, but water does get in. Now, what I've done is uh, I've sent a local canvasser here in Bunbury, and uh, we made up some canvas to it pretty much cover most of the areas that are uh, gonna allow water to get in. Now, on the sides, I've got most areas covered up, but it's still a little bit of water gets in there. I did put a, uh, what is it, Scotch guard on the actual carpet, and that's kept a majority of the uh, wooden here from getting stuffed up and uh, flexing and plying and that kind of thing. Um, but I was still getting a little bit of water from the back. So I thought, how am I gonna stop this? So I went to uh, TWB uh, Fabrication here in Bunbury as well, and he uh, pretty much bent up an alloy hoop for me, bolted it directly to the tray. Um, it is hard bolted, so it's hard mounted, so it's uh, not gonna go anywhere. And uh, then I went back to the canvas shop and he made a rail for the uh, back canvas to sit in, put buttons on the side so I can still access the uh, power box and that kind of stuff from the side because when I'm camping, normally I run my power cables and that kind of thing and plug them into the um, Siggy lighters that are on the actual electrical box. And uh, that's pretty much how I stopped 90% of the water coming in. A little bit of water still comes in through here, but it's not too bad at all. So um, yeah, it's pretty much 90% of water can't get into the back anymore, which I think is pretty good. So uh, as I said, been running this for, uh, well, this, this actual covering setup for uh, pretty much all the winter. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been pretty good. So happy with uh, the amount of water that's staying out and it gives you lots of, uh, well, it actually keeps a cooler in here as well for the fridge. So the fridge isn't working as hard. It's not out of the elements. Didn't really bother the Waco, but, um, but it definitely is better to keep it out of the elements if you can. Now, other things happening in the tray. 
these are 3,800 mil drawers. So if you don't know already, they're 3,800 mil drawers. They also lead you about 200 mil behind the drawers because you've actually got quite a long tub in the uh, Trident. And these aren't mounted directly. Um, there's actually probably about 50 mil of space between the drawers and the actual uh, uh, tub, you know, tub door. So you've got a little bit of space there. So because it's a Trident, it's got a big old butt, you've got a lot of space in the back there that you can um, get things working and that kind of thing. Behind the drawers, I've put a battery, 80 amp hour, Sentry battery. Um, that pretty much runs everything from the solar. Um, it's hooked up to the main battery for the kick-ass DC to DC charger, um, which also takes the solar input. But, um, but that's all housed obviously in the electrical box, so that all keeps out of the weather. Um, but yeah, 80 amp hour battery, pretty standard stuff, dual battery setup, nothing crazy, but um, definitely works for me. And I've got my 33 inch Toyo RT tire sitting in the back here as well. Um, that is literally this mounted up against the, um, you know, the tub rack and that doesn't go anywhere. So I'm um, nice and easy to remove as well. It's not too hard at all. I've wrapped a line, the actual tub, so you can uh, stop all the scratches and that kind of thing. This was done a couple of years ago and it still looks fantastic. You can spray it out with a uh, high pressure um, cleaner and it comes up fantastic. So at the moment it's a little bit dirty because I've actually been camping. But um, yeah, just give you an idea of uh, the wrap the line has been holding up. It's been fantastic. Now, apart from all the usual stuff, um, we've obviously got switches down here for all the lights, pretty standard stuff. I've got the uh, little little three-point uh, WSB and a 12-volt uh, gauge. Uh, there's also a 12-volt gauge on the um, King's electrical box as well. Um, but yeah, just I didn't have obviously the uh, electrical box when I originally put that in, otherwise I wouldn't have had uh, two 12-volt boxes in there. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much um, that's pretty much it, I suppose, for the back of the car. Uh, the, two, the solar panel on the roof is 250 watts, uh, so that obviously, I think, draws in about 6 to 8 amps per hour, roughly, off the top of my head, don't quote me on that, but roughly. Uh, but I never really have any dramas with the uh, 80 amp hour back, um, battery in the back. Normally, the Waco is in here 24-7, so I don't ever get it to a point where it's run out of power. Um, and it also draws, I believe, 20 amps from the alternator, the kick-ass DC to DC charger, when you're driving. So it's not too bad at all, fills up that thing quite easily. Everything else in here is practical. Uh, swag goes in the back, uh, fridge goes on that side. This is obviously on a slide, and in the drawers I keep my uh, hot water system. I also keep uh, Jimmy's bag. I'm um, not on there at the moment because um, I've pretty much pulled them all out to give it a bit of a clean. But uh, yeah, Jimmy's bag normally sits in there. I've got my uh, gas cooker and that kind of thing in there. And um, that's pretty much my food. This is pretty much my recovery gear and bits and bobs that I take camping. And you've probably seen the videos before. I pretty much carry those little um, like toolboxes, I suppose, with a little briefcase um, that houses all my dry food and that kind of thing. But, um, but this is pretty much it. This is how the rear is set up. There's obviously stuff bolted onto it. We've got like shovels, um, we've got the treads, or uh, well, the tread pro, just to say. They're mounted up with the actual tread brackets. And on that side, I've got two jerry cans, which I use for water. I excuse these planes. There's millions of planes here at the moment. I'm not actually sure why, but there's planes going around everywhere. Um, and there's a, also a 12 volt water pump in the back as well, which I use to hook up to my uh, gas wa hot water system. The gas hot water system is, I'm not actually sure of the brand. It is a SmartTech uh, Smart Hot Water System, SmartTech 6. Uh, as I said, that just lives in there 24 seven and um, it's ready to go when I go on my trips. And super big, you know, all super big um, bits and bobs in the drawers. But I uh, can't really talk too much more about the rear tray. I think that covers most things. Um, the actual outlet for the airbag man compressor is down here. They also give you a, um, like an air pump um, with a hose on it. It's a quick curly hose, so you can plug it in its back, plug it into all your, um, you know, all into your wheels and pump your tires up, that kind of thing. So pretty standard stuff. But, um, but I feel like that covers everything. I feel like I covered everything in the tray. But it's very simple. I like to keep my camping super simple. Uh, my electrical system is quite simple. Um, how I get water and that kind of thing, nice and easy on the side there. Um, they don't protrude any further than the actual flares. So a lot of people ask me, do they come out further than the flares? The flares? No, they don't. Um, shovel on this side, treads, happy days. You are camping. Super simple. Keep it simple, stupid. My philosophy for everything about this car, keep it simple, stupid. But uh, I suppose let's go around the side, talk about what's happening on the side, and um, we'll get into some details about roof rack and that kind of thing. All right, side of the car. Um, cut snake flares, 
They've been on there for a good two years now, I think. Um, you can probably see on this side here, I'll just give you an idea of what that bar looks like. So you can see the bar there bolted up to the, um, the tub and pretty simple stuff. Just little pins to um, access all the electrics on this side as well. Got my two 20 litre jerry cans, which sit on there all the time. They're full of water. So I've got water for cooking. I've got water for cleaning my hands, all that kind of stuff. So nice and simple. And you can probably see the hose there, which that sits in there all the time as well. That's for the 12 volt pump. Uh, I'll go for the Toyos and the, you know, the tires and the rims and that kind of stuff in a different section. Um, but we've also got the, I should probably did forgot in the back of it, the uh, powerful four by four bar. Actually, no, I'll do that in the, um, in the protection section, I suppose. Uh, Kick-ass shower awning, um, pretty awesome little awning and probably takes like 30 seconds to set up. I really do like this awning. Um, it's been fantastic. I've had how many dramas. They're actually quite cheap as well. I think about 200 bucks, but um, nice and easy to set up. Been used multiple times and um, yeah, just, just really good gear. Happy with it, no complaints. Uh, roller roof rack. So these are on some roller bars. Um, these, are, these are actually designed to take 100 kilos each, I believe, off the top of my head. And the roller roof rack is a 1500 by, I think it's 1500, 1500 by 1500, because it's a perfect square. I'm pretty sure it's the size, but if, I, if it's wrong, I'll chuck it in the video. But um, that's been on there, the Titan roof rack, that's been on there for ages. Awesome bit of kit, I think two years as well. And on the front here, I've got um, a LED bar or light bar, 42 inch LED light bar installed with the roller roof rack mounts. Also with the, um, all the awnings are mounted on there with the roller awning mounts and I also have a gas bottle mount on the back um, when I run my hot water system. You can probably see a little aerial here, which is actually a Cellfi, uh, you know, 4G, 3G um, reception booster from Telstra, or well, not from Telstra, but there, you know, boost your Telstra signal. But um, that uh, is pretty good when you're out and about in the sort of hilly areas, you can still get some reception when you're out and about, which is really good for safety. But uh, that pretty much, I think, I feel like covers everything. I've got uh, window shields. They've been on there since day one. They've been holding up. They're just off eBay, so they've been fantastic, holding up for ages. Um, I feel like I'm covering everything here. I don't, I don't want to miss out anything, but, um, but I haven't got any side steps. I took them off, but not really going to get any side steps for it because, yeah, I don't do any rock, you know, rock calling or anything like that. So I haven't really had a situation where I'm going to damage my um, side steps. Um, it's mostly a beach hack, this car, um, and going out to Brunswick. But, um, but yeah, that's probably as much as I can talk about on the side. So we'll go to the next section, which is under the bonnet, because uh, there's a fair bit happening under there, especially for a Trident. And then we might jump in the interior after that. All right, so under the bonnet. So... Fair bit going on here. Uh, I'm going to talk about the things that are replaced. I've replaced the radiator. Uh, I've got a little hairline crack in that. Um, happened after I jumped on a June. It was obviously on its way out and um, got a little hairline crack, so uh, is what it is. Sentry battery um, on the main. I haven't actually got dual batteries in the, in the front anymore because I actually took out the secondary battery and put it in the tray um, just to obviously keep some weight off the front springs and that kind of thing. But um, sentry battery in the front, which is running, you know, Spotties, LED roof rack, uh, the aerial, or the two-way I should say, um, and all that kind of stuff. So all the basic stuff you run off the front. Haven't got the winch in there anymore. I'm actually replacing the cables. So that's obviously in between uh, services. But um, obviously I have, normally I have the Ridge Rider winch on here as well. And I've got a hell of a lot of performance gear on here. So when I did the radiator, um, it's always a good idea because, you know, do hoses and that kind of stuff. Um, so I did, re we've got some new hoses. These are just um, silicon hoses that I got off a website. Can't quite remember where, but um, pretty easy to find if you just type in MN Trident radiator hoses. Plasma Man intercooler kit. So this is their full blown intercooler kit. So it comes with the hoses, comes with the intercooler and all the gear you need to mount it up. Um, after the tune, that is easily the best thing I've done for this car. It keeps the intake temperatures in summer so down. If you're on the beach giving it a hack and absolutely flogging the guts out of your car, your uh, intake temperatures, I barely go above 50 degrees. And before they were probably hitting about 80 to 100 degrees when I'm on the beach. So um, that is definitely the best thing I've done for the car. If you've tuned to Trident, get yourself a Plasma Man intercooler kit. It'll, uh, yeah, absolutely save your car from uh, sucky and hot air and keep your turbo cool. All that kind of cool stuff. Not your turbo cool, but your engine cool. 
um, and obviously intake temperature is nice and cool as well. Um, the chip, so this is chipped, it's not remapped or anything. So it's got a chip which is called a chip it chip. Um, myself and Nick, down at Nick's Mechanical and Esperance, we uh, got on the dyno, got some good figures out of it. I believe it was 137 kilowatts and about 500 newton meters of torque, roughly off the top of my head. Um, it's not a big power car, it's more about reliability and uh, drivability. And we also did a snorkel, a custom air box, which houses a pod filter, which all goes into the factory piping. And I've obviously got my catch can. Um, I've still got the EGR delete, which you can pick off. If a lot of people ask me where I got EGR delete cable, pick them up off eBay, they're about hundred bucks. Um, that stops the EGR, well, essentially it tricks the computer thinking the EGR is open, but it actually keeps it closed and uh, stops that recirculation of uh, gases and that kind of stuff going through your intake. But um, probably the best thing you can do for these cars because they do really, really suck in a lot of uh, intake, uh, sorry, of exhaust gas back through the intake and they clog up at about 150, oh, about 100 to 150,000 Ks. This is 120,000 Ks at the time of this video, roughly. Um, and I've actually looked inside the intake and it is clean as a whistle. I got the car at 30,000 Ks and I put, that was the first thing I put on. So it definitely does work. Um, other things that I've done into the engine bay, uh, it did have it, as I said, it did have a dual battery. So I still got the dual battery tray in there, but um, that's pretty much, I'd probably say about it. We had to relocate the coolant bottle um, because obviously the snorkel comes through there. So we relocated that behind the airbox, custom mounted it. Um, the turbo is still the factory turbo. Uh, that's still going strong three years after the tune, putting out 27 PSI, still going strong. I've had no dramas with it. Um, yeah, I've, you just don't have your maintenance, you know, fuel, fuel filters, all that kind of stuff. Uh, oil done every 10,000 Ks, so um, just kept it nice and healthy. But, um, but that's probably about it for the engine bay. But if you've got to tune these things, a little bit of advice. If you're going to tune a Mitsubishi Trident, first thing you need to do is replace that stock intercooler because people say, oh, it's good enough for, you know, a tune. But uh, if you're really tuning these cars and um, want to get some good numbers out of it, you really need to put an aftermarket intercooler on it. Um, Plasma Man's obviously one of the better ones you can get. You've got cross, uh, cross country intercoolers as well. They're fantastic as well. But um, yeah, I really highly recommend a new intercooler for these cars. Uh, Forefront Industries also does a intercooler kit too. Um, they sell them on eBay. I feel like saying they're about 350 bucks. That's an all alloy, no plastic uh, tanks. So they're great if you just want to replace the factory intercooler with a, with a better intercooler, essentially. Um, but yeah, definitely put a better intercooler on these cars. Turbo-wise, I don't think you need to upgrade it. Some people say you can put a bigger turbo on there. I haven't found the need yet, and um, you're putting out 500 newton meters reliably, so I really don't think you need to upgrade turbos. And factory turbos and these things are actually quite cheap. So if you do have a turbo go on you, it's actually not too bad to uh, get another turbo and uh, mount it all up because obviously it just mounts all the factory points. Uh, exhaust wise, I'll talk about that with since we're in the engine bay, is a three inch, no uh, high flow cat and no muffler. So it is a quite a loud car, but it definitely, um, definitely I think sounds quite unique for a Trident. But, uh, but yeah, three inch, no, no muffler, no resonator with a high flow cat. That's my exhaust on the car uh, in mild steel, not stainless steel. And uh, that's about it for under here, I think. I feel like I haven't missed out anything, but, um, I suppose all the like you know gauges and that kind of stuff I could probably talk about under here. I've got a boost T um, which just mounts up and goes into the uh, into the car. I've got an EGR sorry EGT gauge in the car as well for my exhaust gas temperatures. But um, I feel like saying that's about it. Um, big thing with these cars, as I said, chip or tune it some way, put an intercooler on it, um, maintain it, and you're pretty much good to go. So. Let's go underneath the car. Actually, no, let's go to the front of the car um, and talk about bull bar, spotties, um, all that kind of stuff. So I suppose let's uh, transition to the front of the car. Okay, so the front of the vehicle. Um, okay, let's start off with the big thing. Bull bar, Iron Man commercial deluxe bar. Um, I have removed the uh, under flare spoiler things that, um, that sit on these bull bars. Um, didn't really like the look of it, so I removed those, but they mainly just stop water getting into the engine bay and that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, as I said, didn't really like the look of them, so I removed them. The spotties are a nine inch Ridge Rider. Um, I believe they don't make them anymore, but it's just a standard driving light. They actually do put out quite a good uh, distance down the road. I think it's about 500 meters, and they do really, really, really well when you're driving at night and uh, on the road. 
Um, I hooked them up to a switch, so I used to have them on the um, headlight switch, but I've hooked them up to a manual switch now, so I can just turn them off and on. But um, they've been on the car for about three years now and uh, holding up really well. Uh, I've sprayed the front of them just to give them a bit of a different look, so that it's not a standard black headlights. I think it looks quite nice, but everyone's subjective. Up the top, 42 inch light bar. Um, it's a Defend Industries uh, light bar. I put that in there purely because when I go into the bush, these are just a touch too bright and I uh, find the light bar just spreads into the bush a little bit better. So um, I put that up there. Um, it wasn't too expensive, I think around 250, 300 bucks off the top of my head, but for the price, um, I put, put it on the roller roof racks, as I said before in the video, and it's been fantastic and I really do like it. And I use it all the time. So when I'm out bush and doing those night runs and that kind of stuff. Two-way aerial. Um, it is a 4DB uh, Ridge Rider unit as well. Um, I got this when I was doing stuff for Super Cheap Auto and it's been fantastic so far. I've never had a drama with it. You turn it on, you talk to people on the channel. When you finish your camp and you turn it off, not much to really talk about. But as I said, also been on there for about three years. I've done a video on YouTube for that one. Now the uh, actual uh, grill I've resprayed. So this used to be a gray color. So the inside here used to be a gray um, and this used to be a chrome with a, like a gray on it as well. He's getting a, like stone chips and that kind of stuff on it and it looked a bit how you going. So I, um, I resprayed these black, just in a nice matte black and I resprayed the front of it as well black um, just to give it a nicer look and just look to sort of go in with the whole black silver theme I've got going on the car. The headlights are from Mars. So there's a place in Melbourne which does replacement headlights for a lot of cars, replacement tail lights too. Um, so if you want to get those, you can either go on eBay and just look up MN Trident headlights or you can get them from Mars directly. Um, if you just go into their website, um, if you just look up this bloody mozzie, if you look up uh, Mars LED halo headlights, I believe off the top of my head, hang on a sec, got him. Um, they will direct you to the right place and um, you can get yourself a set. I feel like saying they're about 500 bucks. So yeah, they're definitely not cheap, but they're a, uh, I think they do make the car look a hell of a lot better on the road, give you a lot more presence. And um, I do like the halo rings, which is pretty cool. Underneath, I have a four mil bash plate. Um, not sure where, also got this off eBay. It's been on the car since day one. So um, I've had that sitting on rocks and all the rest of it. It is a hell of a bash plate and I do really like it. It's got the Mitsubishi logo um, edge cut into it as well. But um, I only go back to the uh, diff. I don't go all the way back to the gearbox. because I do find the gearbox is actually quite protected in this car. There's a lot, it's, it's really sort of put up into the, um, into the chassis rails. So I don't have too many dramas with um, hitting rocks and all that kind of stuff on it. And it's not a rock crawler, so I don't, I don't really do too much of that kind of stuff when I'm in the car. So it's mainly mud and beach work that this car gets done, as I said earlier in the video. Four inch snorkel, done by my mate at Nick's Mechanical. Uh, I resprayed it in Raptor lining as well, just like the bull bar. Um, that's mainly for protection and also makes it easier to clean and stops all the trees gouging through my uh, homemade paint job that I did on originally, which is like a gloss black. But that got scratched up really easily and um, yeah, didn't really like the look of it when it was all scratched up. So I figured I'll wrap the line it as well and um, hasn't had a drama since. This stuff is bloody awesome. So I do really rate it. It's been on here for about a year and a half now. It hasn't faded, still looks like the day I put it on there. So I'm really happy with, um, with the Raptor lining. Uh, inside the, you might be able to see it, but inside the grill, I put in two horns. They're a little bit louder than the factory horn, which broke, um, but I'll go through all the stuff that's broken on the car at the end of the video. But uh, yeah, I put the factory, um, sorry, I put two replacement horns for the factory horn. They're nice and loud. And underneath, uh, I've also got, um, uh, sorry, I've also, spray painted the sway bar it's still got the standard sway bar um, i've put on extended links for the sway bars um, just to suit the lift a little bit better so it doesn't give you any more travel but it just starts, stops everything from binding up and uh, that's probably about it for the front of the car with suspension because um, i do suspension in a different segment and that's probably about it oh normally i've got a winch in here twelve thousand pound from ridge rider that's been in there for about three to four years been going strong used it about 25 times um, and never had a drama with it. It's been fantastic. The reason it's not in there right now is it's getting the rope replaced because I've run over some rocks and uh, busted up the rope. So um, a bit of a balls up on my part, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, let's go around to, I suppose, the other side. Um, we'll talk about the tires. We'll talk about um, the Toyos. We'll talk about the rims and uh, all that kind of thing in the next segment. All right, let's talk about this side of the car. So we're going to talk about tires, suspension, um, we'll talk about the awning, um, everything that's pretty much on this side, maybe a little bit about the flares and what's happening underneath. So we'll start from underneath, one piece tail shaft. 
uh, done by a uh, business in Perth. I think it's Midland Drive Drain Services off the top of my head. Can't quite remember, but um, but it cost me about 300 bucks and it's the best thing you can do for a, a, a lifted Trident because they get a bit of a shudder when you're um, lifting them up and that kind of thing because it's got a two-piece tail shaft, puts them on a weird angle, get a bit of a weird shudder. Uh, so definitely worth doing. Snorkel, four inch, as I said, done by my mate Nick at uh, Nick's Mechanical. Um, that's been fantastic, four inch, um, gives you a great sound, all that kind of stuff. So um, definitely any kind of snorkel is a good thing, but um, good four inches, uh, I think, just a little bit nicer looking, a little bit better. Super Peg, 180 degrees awning, absolutely love this thing. Um, best thing I've done to the awning side of things and uh, shade, because it's super thick, it's really good canvas, really easy to set up. Takes about five minutes to set up. Bag is massive. Um, oversized bag, so it's really easy to pack up as well. So um, I cannot praise the Super Peg awning enough. Um, also on this side, we can talk about the tires. Now I've had these on here for, I feel like saying about 20,000-ish Ks now. Um, Toyo RT285 by 75 on a 16. Also on a dynamic wheels 16 by eight with a zero offset wheel. So hopefully that gives you all the information you need for the tires and wheels combo. They do not scrub on a zero offset with a two inch lift. I can't stress that enough. I've never had scrubbing on this car. The only thing you have to do is just remove the mud flaps and you're ready to rock and roll. You can put 33s on a Trident, happy days, two inch lift. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, if you're an avid viewer of the channel, hang a sec, he said two inch lift. I thought he had a three inch lift. I sure did. So I also used to have Ironman suspension, I don't anymore. So Ironman suspension, that was on there for about 60,000 Ks, could not rate it highly enough, it was fantastic. The only drums I had with it was a leaf spring going a bit saggy, but I believe that was due to uh, manufacturing error, so um, nothing to do with the actual brand itself, just the way it was manufactured, it was a little bit soft, so maybe it wasn't hardened properly or whatever. Um, really liked it, 60,000 Ks later, um, I decided to get a bit vigorous with the car and yeah, get the front end up a little bit, the upper control arm decided to have a bit of a conversation with the strut and I put a dent in it. Um, lucky I didn't pierce it because uh, that would have been really, uh, really bad, but um, didn't pierce it, just put a dent in it. Now, you can't really have a dent in your strut because now you have a massive weak point in the suspension and uh, yeah, I upgraded the suspension. So I put on Rancho suspension, a um, little bit different, didn't want to go Dobbinson's or the other kind of stuff, a little bit different. Um, so this kit is a two inch, uh, two inch strut. Um, we were going to put 10 mil spaces in the front, but when I put the shims on the Ironman suspension, I found the ride really hard. So I lost a bit of down travel. It used to bottom out pretty much everywhere because when you're obviously lifting it up, it's pretty much pushing that upper control arm as close to the chassis as possible. And I had probably about an inch of travel and it looked good. It gave me a lot of clearance at the front, but uh, it actually hindered my off-road performance. So um, yeah, got rid of the three inch, got rid of the strut spaces. Or well, in that case, it was uh, with the Ironman's the shims, but um, I got rid of all of that and uh, went with the standard two inch lift. Um, much happier, much better ride, nice and smooth. This has been on here for about 20-ish thousand Ks now. Um, I got it just before I got the tires. Oh, I was probably actually 25, maybe 30,000 Ks. I can't quite remember, I don't really keep Ks and things but it's been awesome so far. I got that done at the guys at uh, PDP in Perth. Um, they did all the uh, suspension for me. So um, I spoke a bit about it at the front. I've got extended sway bar links, um, which just take away all that uh, binding up you get in the sway bar with a lifted, uh, lifted vehicle, because they're actually a longer length than standard. So um, I put those in, they were done by, uh, oh, I can't think of the name, Super. I'll put it up on the screen, but there's a, um, yeah, the link kit, um, you can actually adjust it. Um, I'm trying to oh, I think of the name, but anyway, doesn't matter. Um, so I got those in, standard sway bar, and that's pretty much about it. Oh, brakes, I just recently updated to the Bendex brakes with the uh, Ultimate Brake Upgrade Kit. And uh, you can actually you might be able to see it, but in the background, I've got the um, Bendex box, which I'm using for my camera box. They are awesome. No more squeaking. Uh, they pull up awesome. They pulled up a car length better than my DBA slotted brakes. Um, with their pads, I can't quite remember the pads I had on there, but um, no, really happy with those brakes, they're awesome. 90 mil cut snake, uh, sorry, 90 mil cut snake flares. Um, you can also get these in a 60 mil kit off the top of my head. Uh, with a zero offset, you need to put bigger flares in there because you will get about an inch of tire coming out of the car. Um, you could probably get away with 60 mil, but I like the 90 mil, just so it doesn't spray mud and all that kind of crap down the side of your car. 
but um, stops a lot of stone chips and that kind of thing flicking up and that kind of thing as well. But um, but yeah, cut snack flares, front and rear, really easy to install. I sort of botched mine up, but hey, it is what it is. But uh, that's pretty much, you obviously got the Tread Pros and that kind of stuff on the back, but that's more of your back area. Um, I'll talk about the rear suspension, so two inch lift, um, also Rancho uh, with, their, uh, with their shocks and also a 150 kilo constant uh, leaf spring. I've gone down from a 300 because I've taken a lot of weight off the back. And the uh, I've got Airbag Man um, Airbag Helper Kit in there. Um, I can't praise Airbag Man enough for the quality of their product. I have given that thing absolute hell. They've been on there for a good three to four years now and they've never let me down. Always held air. Absolutely quality gear. Cannot praise that company enough. Australian made gear. Go see Jacob and Benny for any of your um, airbag man or any kind of airbag suspension needs because they are absolutely fantastic. Um, I've been I've had a relationship with those guys for a couple of years now and they are absolutely awesome to deal with. Customer service is second to none. Even when I need spare parts and that kind of thing, they just literally make it happen. So absolutely awesome company to deal with. I cannot praise that company enough. Australian made, get behind it. Just like Superpeg from Queensland, get behind those Australian made companies and um, support Australian made products. But uh, also with Airbag Man, as I said in the back, I've got the uh, adjustability in the car to raise and um, you know lift up the back end and that kind of stuff when I put extra weight in there. But uh, suspension wise, that's pretty much about it. I have no rear sway bar. So if you're asking, I do not have a rear sway bar. Never needed one. Um, I do obviously get a fair bit of flex out of the back of this thing with um, without sway bars. But um, yeah, never needed it. And I've never been in a situation where I'm like, ooh, probably need a little bit uh, stiffness in my suspension, but it's been fantastic. So without further ado, let's go inside the cabin. I'll show you a few little tips and tricks I've done in here and a few changes I've made probably since the last video as well. All right, move my camera. I actually ran out of SD card on my uh, camera, so I have to do half of this on my um, iPhone. So hopefully uh, the quality is all right. But um, here we are, interior of the car. So as I said before, two-way radio done by Ridge Rider. Um, there's a couple of cool little things I've done with this. Mounted up here on a magnet, so if you're actually driving around on the, um, the bush and that kind of thing, um, getting it over here can be a little bit of how you're going. So I like to sit it there, but I just like to have it there. So when I want to talk, I can talk on my two-way, put it back up there. Mazda 3, um, uh, what are they called, climate control or whatever dials, you can get these off eBay, they're about 20 bucks. Um, you literally pull off the other ones, put these back on, it gives you a better look. I, I reckon they look nicer than the factory uh, factory units. Sony head unit, I've had that on for a couple of years now. It also does Apple CarPlay, so that is probably one of the best things that you can do to the interior of this car, is uh, put a really nice head unit in here because then you've got Google Maps, all that kind of stuff, Waze, whatever you want to use. You've got uh, you know, Spotify, YouTube Music, all that kind of stuff going through the stereo. I've upgraded the speakers to a um, just a Sony 6-inch speaker. On this side, you have the dual gauges. On the top is my battery. On the bottom is my boost and also my uh, EGT gauge. Um, just got a standard um, you know, phone holder. Um, this is the IOTI phone holder. So I've, um, I've been for a few of these and I found this one to be actually one of the better ones on the market. So um, not a bit of a shout out to those guys, but it's actually really, really stiff and doesn't wobble or anything like that when you're um, off-roading, which I found really hard to get when you uh, go with those cheaper off-road units. So those cheaper mobile phone holder units. Grab me gear, canvas bag. That mainly holds um, just bits and bobs inside the interior. I only put my wallet or whatever in there. Um, if I'm off-roading, I put like, you know, gauges and, you know, like tire pressure gauges and all that kind of stuff in there. Uh, I've got my EDS down here, which um, I have put into, you can probably see it, put into my center console section here. My EDS has actually finally died. The screen on it died, so half it's um, all burnt out. So um, I'll have to replace that. But um, but yeah, that's that's been on there for four years as well, so that's been going strong. So we are likewise, um, I pretty much went and bought a, because because the standard um, gear knobs in these cars, they sort of wear out, and they've got like a weird fake leather on them. Um, I didn't really like it, so I went with the We Are Likewise um, gear knob. I actually, th I actually really like it. It's got a lot of good grip. If you've got mud in your hands, it's actually you get some really good grip on there. I did have a uh, cheapie on there before, which I just put on my low range box down the bottom here, but it um, gives you a bit more access. It's, it's a little bit easy to uh, you know, grab a hold or two. So you can probably see something a little bit different to your Trident. Um, these get a grip handles. Now, um, this is the old, I used to, well, I suppose people in patrols call them the old Jesus bar. Um, so this is actually mounted on there nice and hard. 
Um, get a grip made these for me. Um, you can get all different, you know, colors. You can get stuff to suit your car. I went black, silver, and red to sort of suit the uh, my my setup I've got. And I've got them all through the interior as well as grab handles, that kind of thing. Um, just to add a little bit of flair to your interior. Um, as I said, the reason I put it there is uh, the passenger can hold on and uh, yeah, grab onto something when we're doing a bit of uh, crazy forward driving. Down the bottom here, I've got my um, e-bag controls. That's all pretty standard stuff. And that's pretty, oh, I've got my high cut throttle controller in here, still running that guy. And I've got my two switches for my LED light bar and my spotties. Um, the seats at the front, I used to have custom buckets in here um, from Auto Technica, but they, the actual um, fabric on them wore out and they, they got a bit haggy going. So um, I replaced those with some 2018 uh, MN, or it might be 2017, 2017, 2018 MN Trident seats. So the standard seats you get from um, a GLXR, super comfortable. So if you want to um, do something in your interior that really makes a difference is upgrade your seats to the GLXR um, seats because they make such a big difference. They're so much more bolstering and um, they're super comfortable. So um, so yeah, definitely worthwhile doing. On the center console, I have this, uh, it's, well, it's the same material now I've got on the seats, but it's actually like a wetsuit material. And uh, in there, obviously, you just got your standard stuff to uh, hide away all the bits and bobs that are rolling around your cabin. But um, that's pretty much it for the interior, I feel like saying. In the back, I've got me Waco TB. I think that's a 10 can. Uh, cooler um, that just runs off my cigarette lighter, but um, just keeps food uh, warm or cold actually does a really good job of keeping uh, food warm So if you put a pie or something in there chuck it on the warm cycle by the time you actually get eating it um, Yeah, all your food nice and warm and hot so uh, definitely worthwhile doing if you put cool beers in there um, It works off ambient temperature. So if you have your air conditioner on and get it down to like 20 degrees um, That I believe knocks 10 degrees off so your little things running at 10 degrees So um, no real complaints there keeps your food cold and uh, warm when you need it. And I've got a little GoPro mount up here um, when I'm doing, you know, driving and that kind of stuff so I don't have to have it, you know, hold it, which would be obviously irresponsible. And that's probably about it, I think, in here. Um, keep it simple, stupid is the rule. But uh, yeah, everything you need when you go camping, everything you need when you go full driving. So yeah, let's uh, go to the next step, which is talking about all the stuff that has uh, happened to this car and all the stuff that's gone wrong. All right, so. Um, I'll go through sort of answer some questions about the Trident. Um, everything that's gone wrong with it. Um, radiator, had to replace that. Um, may love to see all your servicing and that kind of stuff, which is all just preventive maintenance. Uh, I had to replace the clutch, but that was sort of more, I suppose, preventive maintenance. But the original clutch was pretty worn out, so um, I definitely, I suppose that could have gone wrong if I uh, left it in there and um, kept on using that factory clutch. Uh, suspension. My fault a little bit um, because the upper control arms decided to um, smash into my struts because of my poorly uh, made decision on my three inch lift at the front. Um, yeah, definitely that's probably uh, something that went wrong with the, the original struts because I probably would have kept a hold of them because the, uh, the Iron Man was still going pretty strong. But, um, but hey, it is what it is. Wanted to try something different, that's what it's all about. But uh, yeah, definitely, definitely something that went wrong with it, which was my upper control arms hitting my, uh, my struts. And I uh, didn't actually say it in the, um, the side of the bit of the car, but the actual upper control lines are done by My Tough 4x4. So they do a kit for the Mitsubishi Trident. Um, and from far as I wear from the guys at the alignment place, they reckon they get it back to pretty much standard, you know, uh, you know standard height um, adjustments of uh, alignment and that kind of thing, like towing the camber and that kind of stuff comes back to perfect. So, um, so no dramas there. Uh, and that's pretty much it, I feel like saying. I probably made a lot of mistakes with the car along the way, but I suppose that's like any build. Um, it's gone through a lot of phases. I've gone from having a canopy, um, having a full, I suppose, canopy setup when I used to have the um, the fiberglass canopy on there, which was the standard factory uh, Mitsubishi canopy. Um, and now I've obviously got this, uh, you know, this setup, which obviously come with its own different problems, which is obviously allowing water to come in. So to fix that, obviously I had to put canvas on. But uh, but again, it's it's all a process. You're not going to have a perfect car. Um, in your first build, you're not going to get it right in your first build. And I suppose that's why I wanted to make this video is um, to give you guys ideas to uh, not make the mistakes that I did um, along the way. So I suppose even things like uh, I had a different set of spotties in there. I had the King spotties. Uh, they were good um, for their worth. 
But again, they, you know, they failed on me and, um, you know, it's just a mistake you make. Uh, buying cheap gear, you're just going to end up with uh, dramas along the way down the track. But, um, but it is what it is, you know. We are, we, it's all a learning process. So uh, I'm not going to, you know, harp on and say, well, it's me. But, you know, definitely spend some money in areas that I uh, probably shouldn't have um, or on products that I probably shouldn't have. And, yeah, now I've learned the lesson of buying stuff that's uh, really high quality because then you don't have the same drama along the track. But, uh, hey, it is what it is, and you do what you need to do. Um, one thing I'd actually praise that uh, was cheap was probably these drawers. Um, these drawers came out really good. Um, they're metal, but uh, they've, they've held up and they've really handled um, everything I've thrown at them. They've been there for about a year and a half, but I've, I haven't been nice on them. Um, and they, as I said, they've been out in the elements pretty much for the last year and a half. Um, yeah, held up really well. So the Titan drawers, definitely, um, definitely holding up down the track. So that's pretty much the only things that have gone wrong with it um, that I can really think of. I did actually make a list, but it's on my phone. And obviously my phone's recording, but I did check it before and I feel like I've covered off everything on the car. Um, there is a lot obviously happening with this car and um, definitely a lot of things that I've done to it. And as I said, it's been through multiple phases. Um, and as I said, this is the final phase. I'm not going to touch it anymore. Um, it is pretty. It's it's all done. So, um, in saying that, I've got a bit of a, a bit of a reveal that's going to happen to the channel in the next probably couple of months, uh, depending when this video comes out. Um, this uh this Trident is actually going to be for sale. Uh, I'm actually going to sell it. So, yeah. It's gonna be a sad day because I absolutely love this car. It's 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 been it's been uh, really awesome. It's been a really good car, and as I said, it hasn't had anything really majorly really go wrong with it. Um, but yeah, it's time to uh, move on to bigger and better things, and that's why I probably called this video the last the last phase um, because yeah, I'm definitely going to sell it, and um, it's going to go to a new home, and uh, whoever buys it hopefully really really enjoys it because they're going to buy a very very well set up car with a lot of gear on it. Um, the only thing I do when I sell it, I'm gonna take the super peg awning off. Um, I wanna put that on the next car. So yeah, it's gonna be definitely a sad day, but um, as I said, whoever buys it, it's gonna definitely get a very, very well sorted out vehicle that can uh, do a hell of a lot of touring. And uh, yeah, they won't need to do much to it because it'd be, be ready to rock and roll. But uh, enough about the, uh, the sad news of me selling it. Let me talk about a few things that um, you probably should look out for when you're uh, buying a Triton is uh, just check a few things like if it's got a one-piece tail shaft um, check the clutch because I know the standard clutches can go a bit can go a bit wrong um, check if you've had any uh, mechanical issues because I know this uh, this model had a few issues with the head um, cracking and water getting into um, in the head uh, there was a definitely a big massive recall on that one from Mitsubishi so just get it, keep an eye out for that um, and uh, just check the uh, the cap because you need a 137 um, uh, pressure cap on it. Um, that was one of the fixes they did to it to sort of stop the whole thing from yeah melting down. But uh, I suppose all the other thing is just check the chassis if it's been overloaded in the back, if it's been used as a tow vehicle. Obviously, you can snap the chassis in these cars, and a lot of it's got to do with overweight. So you can put 900 kilos in the back of these cars, but you'll be really careful how you do it. Um, and yeah, if it's been towed by a van or something like that, just uh, try to get the history of the vehicle and that kind of thing from the owner because it might just save you a little bit of money down the track from, uh, yeah, heartache and that kind of stuff. And, uh, and that's probably the only things you really need to look out for a Triton. Um, has it had an EGR clean? Um, has the intake been cleaned? Um, has it got a cash can? Uh, how many Ks has it got on it? When was the last EGR, sorry, the intake clean done? Um, timing belt's done at 100,000 Ks. Um, you know, all the tappets, have they been adjusted? You know, check all those key things out when you're uh, buying the car because those are all things that uh, you need to do to keep these cars, um, you know, nice and healthy. So um, I didn't mind 100,000. So um, timing belt and all that's done 100,000 as well. Um, and the water pump as well, all that kind of stuff was uh, changed over. So definitely worth looking out for in the service uh, history when you uh, go buy the car. And, uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it from looking at things that go wrong with it. I still think they're an absolutely awesome vehicle. I absolutely love this vehicle. Um, I drive it every day and uh, I really do enjoy the car and it's bloody capable off-road. Um, if you think Trions aren't capable off-road, you're really, you're really living in a, under a rock because they are a very capable car off-road. If you put a rear locker on these things, they practically go anywhere. Um, I was gonna put a factory locker in the front or an auto locker. I never got around to doing it, so I'll probably just end up selling it because um, yeah, COVID happened and the actual place that I was gonna get it done 
um, yeah, they, they stopped doing work and I haven't really thought about it doing after COVID. Then I was going to put it on the market and I thought, no, I'm not going to bother. So uh, I'll probably sell the factory locker, um, which is just an auto locker. I think I picked it up for like 500 bucks. But I've uh, never been in the car, but you know, it is what it is. Um, I end up putting that on the uh, gum tree or whatever, or if someone wants it, just um, flick me an email. Uh, happy to send it anywhere in Australia. Um, and yeah, as I said, I probably the big things when you're, when you're setting a car up like this is think about your electrical, think about 12 volt, uh, think about what you actually want to do with the vehicle. So uh, in my last video, when I did a video with uh, Jake, we talked about um, doing a couple of trips. So do a couple of trips, go out and about, learn how to do camping and learn how to do it with your vehicle. Because the funny thing is, when I originally had this car, I just put your 50 litre tubs in the back, I'd go out with the missus and we'd just go camping that way. And that was the easiest way of doing it because you just had a 50 litre tub, you can put them in the garage when you're finished and Bob's your uncle, you're ready to go camping. And uh, yeah, you put all your food and that kind of stuff in there and store it in the garage or your, you know, non-perishables and that kind of stuff. And then obviously it leads up to different and different, different things. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, go camping a couple of times and really get an idea of how you want to go camping and that kind of thing. So, um, and I'd probably say spend more money on stuff that's going to make your camping a little bit more enjoyable rather than stuff that's uh, going to be used 1% of the time. So I touched on this in a couple of videos as well, like winches and that kind of stuff. Unless you're going like down Brunswick every single weekend, you're probably not going to need a winch if you're going to go on the beach. Um, if you don't, you, know, you don't really need 33s, but if you're going to go on harder tracks, they definitely make it more, you know, more capable. But if you're going on the beach every weekend, you don't really need 33s. So maybe don't get 33s, maybe get 32s or get 265, 75 on 16s. They are, they are like the perfect size tire for these cars. Um, they don't, they don't, they don't, you don't need a lift to make them fit either. You can put them on um, factory uh, suspension and they also fix the speedo. Um, you get 100 k's on the dial when you uh, put those tires on. But uh, just, just things like that. Just think about what you're going to do with the build. Um, don't go through five phases like me um, and think about weight. It's probably the big thing. On my next build, which I've already got in progress, um, I'm not going to release anything now, but um, I'll think about weight massively because it's going to be a completely different car to this one. So uh, weight's going to be a massive thing. Um, and that can come down to what kind of batteries you're going to use. Are you going to use um, you know, AGM? Are you going to use deep cycle uh, wet batteries? Are you going to use lithium batteries? They might cost more, but they obviously weigh a lot less. But if your payload's a lot less, you need to really think about every single kilo counts, especially when you're setting up your, uh, your vehicle go camping. Um, but yeah, so I'll get into more detail about that further on um, when I pick up the car, I suppose. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll do like the reveal and that kind of stuff. Um, I've sort of given hints on Instagram and that kind of thing. So a few people know about it. It's, it's not a big secret, but, um, but yeah, the next car is going to be a, definitely a different build, which would be pretty cool because it's going to be a brand new build for the channel, which I think is pretty awesome. So um, everyone that's joined the channel, thank you. Thank you so much for joining the channel. 10,000 subscribers. I think that's absolutely awesome. Um, I'm a one man show. I do this on the weekends. I do this in my spare time. Um, and I really, really thank you for joining me on this massive, massive uh, journey. And uh, I really, really appreciate it. And I appreciate everyone putting comments on there, um, watching the video and um, liking and subscribing, all that kind of stuff. It just makes my day um, seeing my subscribers go up and a lot more people enjoying my channel. So, um, so yeah, really, really appreciate it. And uh, thank you so much. I'm uh, very, very, yeah, very, very thankful for what I have on uh, YouTube. So, um, so yeah, I appreciate it. But, uh, but yeah, without making this all warm and fuzzy and all, you know, um, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, Trident's going to be up for sale. Probably, uh, we're in September now, so it's probably going to be in November that I'm going to get rid of it um, and sell it to the new owner. And, uh, and yeah, as I said, anything that's coming off it is the awning. Everything else is staying on there. So, um, so yeah, it's going to be a bloody good, uh, bloody good car for someone down the road. But, yeah, I'm definitely going to be sad to see it go. So, but it is what it is. This is life. All projects must come to an end. All good things must come to an end. But uh, I guarantee you, um, sticking on the channel and you're yeah, going to see the next build, it's going to be a hell of a build. Um, and again, it's going to be all done by me. Um, and yeah, it's going to be all. Actually, one thing I wanted to talk about the next build, it's going to be all Australian companies. It's going to be nothing on there that's going to come from overseas. So that's going to be pretty awesome. So, um, so yeah, I can't wait to uh, put all that stuff on there. I'm using a lot of local guys and a lot of, lo uh, a lot of national companies that are Australian made, Australian owned. Um, yeah, nothing coming from China. Nothing coming from overseas. It's going to be all Australian made gear. So that's pretty awesome. The only thing I think I can't get Australian made is the tyres. 
um, because most of those come from Japan and stuff, so that is what it is. But, um, but everything else on there is going to come from Australian companies, which is pretty cool. I think that's pretty awesome. And uh, proud to be an Australian, proud to support Australian companies. And look, I've got to thank a few people for making this build possible. Um, a lot of people come on board to help out. Airbag man, absolutely awesome dudes. Jacob and Benny, go hit them up for all your airbag man suspension needs. Super Cheap Auto was a massive, massive uh, part of the, um, the channel. Um, I don't do too much for them anymore, but um, they were a massive part of the channel. They helped me out with a lot of gear and uh, helped me out in a lot of the pricing, a lot of gear, which is awesome. PDP, they come on board and um, help me out with the suspension with a bit of a discounted price, which is good. Um, so yeah, that was a massive, um, that was a massive benefit of, um, you know, PDP. So happy days to those guys. And Toyo, another huge supporter of the channel. Um, as I said, they helped me out getting some, uh, some RTs on the car, which was awesome. Uh, I gotta, I gotta say it, four wheel drive super center, as much as I don't like their gear, they've been a um, big part of the channel. I mean, one of my first videos was doing their swag. So I'm not gonna uh, give them a shout out per se, but, um, but they're definitely somewhere in, they're definitely someone in the four wheel drive market that can, uh, cater for certain, uh, demographics and people and, um, different, different people that need different needs. And, uh, I've got to give them a shout out because I've had a lot of their gear on the car. So, uh, Nick from Nick's Mechanical and Esperance, if you live in Esperance, go see Nick. He can, uh, pretty much tune any car and he's a bloody awesome dude to boot. Um, who else can I, uh, thank K and N, um, I've got their pod filter. Don't do much with them, but, uh, shout out to those guys. Cause obviously they looked after me. Um, with all, I wouldn't say they looked after me, but they, um, you know, I installed their pod filter and it's been going great. Uh, dynamic wheels, again, nothing to do with them, but um, great wheels, been awesome on the car, so happy days there. Uh, Iron Man had the original suspension, uh, had the original ball bar, so they've been awesome. Um, bloody good gear, um, can't, can't fault it, so except what I did to it. Uh, My Tough 4x4, they did the UCAs, um, awesome shout out to those guys. Um, oh, I'm probably missing so many people. High Kit, I've been running those guys for the last two years. Really happy with their throttle controller. Grab Me Gear by Jimmy. He uh, obviously gave me this bag to R&D, but I bought all his other stuff, which is um, the bag that goes in the drawers and on the dash. Uh, Vic Off Road in Melbourne, they gave me some lights to test out. These guys on the back here. Um, so shout out to those guys for giving me the lights to test out. That was pretty cool. Uh, Cut Snake Flares, again, nothing to do with them, but I got a shout out to the gear. It's been um, holding up and uh, been fantastic. And probably everyone else along the way, all the, all the other YouTubers I collaborated with that I talked to, uh, WA Cambridge Adventures, Pete, uh, Alex from Intense Off Roads, um, all those guys are so, so helpful with uh, doing different things and giving you different ideas and that kind of stuff. And uh, for this YouTube thing, I made a lot of friends along the way, which is, um, which is really awesome. But uh, I feel like saying that's it. I feel like I've gone through the whole car. I don't feel like I've left anything out. Um, yeah, that is my ultimate Trident build. Going further from here, I think the next big thing you'd probably do is sass the front because everything else is done. There's nothing on this car that hasn't been touched. So um, sass the front would probably be the next big thing, but I'm not dropping 10 grand on a, um, on a Trident to uh, sass the suspension. Um, a lot of people have done it already. So, um, you know, go check out those cars. Uh, I'm not dropping 10 grand on there to um, sass the suspension. But uh, that's been another episode of 4x4 Camping and Adventures. If you like this content, please like, subscribe, and comment. Hopefully, I've answered all your questions. Hopefully, I've gone through everything. So, it's a hell of a long video, and I feel like I've gone through everything. Um, but yeah, definitely a. Um, long video with every single bit of detail you need about this car. Um, yeah, couldn't think of anything else that I could chuck in there, but now I'm just rambling. I'll leave it there, guys. If I don't see you in there in the tracks and trails, I might see you in the next video. If I don't see you in the next video, I shall see you later. Bye, thanks for watching.